Hi, boys and girls, it's Miss Trinka. Today in science, we're going to learn about the scientific method. So you're gonna watch a brain pop video about that, and then we're going to do a science experiment. So stay tuned. <laughs> I know that magnets attract metal objects. I'm just not sure what kind of metal objects stick to magnets. That's cheating, movie. We should do an experiment to find out what really sticks. Wait, we can't just start doing an experiment. What is the scientific method? The scientific method is a set of steps that scientists follow to test their ideas. The first step is to make observations and think of a question we want to ask. Hmm. I've seen magnets attracted to metal objects like refrigerators, cans, and cars. So my question is, do magnets attract all metal objects? The second step is to make a high high hypothesis. Er, thanks, Moby. When you make a hypothesis, you use what you know to make a prediction. Let's see. Refrigerators, cans, and cars are all metal. So I hypothesize that magnets attract all metal things. Now the next step is to do the experiment and test our hypothesis. But how do you do an experiment? First, we need to plan our experiment. We're going to put different metal objects near the magnet and see if they all stick. Now we have to gather our materials. We have to test all of the objects in exactly the same way so we can get accurate results. Oh, right. We should be recording this. How can you record data? Data is information that you can record, like what you observe during an experiment. We can make a chart to record which metal objects the magnet attracts. Thanks, Moby. The magnet attracted the paper clip, nail, fork, and thumbtack. It did not attract the coins, keys, copper pot, or gold ring, but they're made of metal. Are you sure, Moby? Now, I guess our hypothesis was not correct. But we still learn something. How do you draw a conclusion? The next step of the scientific method is to look at your data and draw a conclusion. Let's see. The magnet attracted some metal objects, but not all of them. The objects it attracted are made of iron or steel. Right. I guess those objects are made of metals that magnets do not attract. Like the coin is made of copper and the key is made of brass. My conclusion is that magnets only attract metal objects made of iron or steel. The last step of the scientific method is to share what you learned. I can't wait to show our experiment to the rest of the class. With the scientific method, we can keep testing all kinds of metal objects. What should we test now, Moby? <laughs> I guess magnets attract robots. Okay, so we learn that a scientist always starts with a question. They say, I wonder. Then a scientist makes a hypothesis. That's when they say what they think or predict will happen. Hypothesis.
Then the scientist conducts the experiment and talks about what he or she sees. Then the scientist records or writes down their observations or what they see. That's when they do their, I discovered this or I discovered that. They write it down in their field journal. And last, a scientist forms a conclusion. That's when they talk about what they know and what they learned from the science experiment. Okay, so we are going to do a science experiment about an apple. So here's my field journal. It's just a piece of paper where I'm going to write down the steps of my scientific method. Your field journal for any experiment that you do, it could be a piece of paper, it could be a binder, it could be a little notebook, anywhere that you can write down your scientific method. Okay, we need to start with a question. So our question is going to be, what can you put on an apple slice to keep it from turning brown? Okay, next we are going to make a hypothesis or a prediction. Okay, we are going to use water, milk, lemon, and soda. So we are going to have four pieces of apples and on one piece of apple, we're gonna put water. On the other one, we're gonna put milk. The other one, lemon, the other one, soda. So this is where we need to make a prediction. Hmm, which one do we think will keep the apple slice from turning brown? Hmm, I think I'll go with milk. I think I'll go with milk. Now, a hypothesis could be wrong, and there is nothing wrong with that because a scientist still learns something if their hypothesis is proven wrong, okay? Next, we're going to make a plan and follow our plan. We're going to observe what happens to an apple after it's been sliced. We're going to put one of these things on each slice, water, milk, lemon juice, and soda, and then we're going to watch what happens to each. Do they all turn brown? Which one turns brown first? Which turns brown last? Okay, and now we are going to cut to Ms. Roberts and Ms. Trinka being scientists and showing you this experiment. And after that, we'll come back to our field journal and we will record our results of which one of these kept the apple slice from turning brown. And we'll circle it. And then we will draw our conclusion right here. So stay tuned for the experiment. Hi friends. We're here today, Mrs. Roberts and Mrs. Trinka, Hi. and we're going to do our apple experiment. So remember our question is what can we put on an apple to keep it from turning brown? So let's start by cutting our apples and getting our project set up. Ms. Trinka is going to cut our apple, and you'll notice we're wearing our lab coats to keep our clothes protected, and we have on our masks and our face shield to protect our face. You should never use a knife without a grown-up. Ms. Trinka is a grown-up, so she can handle a knife. She's going to set out our apple slices, and now we are going to put different things on different ones, and then we'll have to wait a little while and check back later. So what are we putting on our first apple, Miss Trinka? Let's start with milk. And remember, our hypothesis was that we thought that this would keep the apple from turning brown. So we're just gonna have to wait and see if we were correct. Okay, I'm just gonna pour this on top. Just like that. You think that's enough, Miss Roberts? I think that's really good. For our second apple, we're going to put a little bit of Dr. Pepper, Miss Trinka's favorite. Mm -hmm. 
Now for our third apple. Miss Trinka is going to cut a lemon and we're going to squeeze some of that lemon juice onto that apple. Make sure we have enough lemon juice to pour onto our apple. Okay, and the last one we're going to try is just plain water. I'm going to pour a little bit in this cup and then on top of our apple. Okay, now it's time to wait. Okay, so let's set our timer for 30 minutes and check that. And then if we need to set it again, we'll set our timer again. Sounds like a plan. Stay tuned, boys and girls. Okay, so this is what our apples looked like after 30 minutes. It looks like the milk is doing okay. And it looks like the lemon juice is doing okay, but the soda has started to turn and the water has started to turn. Let's see what they looked like after one hour. Here we go. The milk and the lemon juice look pretty similar. The milk has started to change just a little bit right here. And our soda is still turning brown and our water is the most brown. So let's see what the apples looked like after an hour and a half. Okay, friends, we're back to check on our apples and we checked them at the 30 minute mark and the hour mark. And now it's been an hour and a half and it is time to draw some conclusions. So first, I want you to take a look at the soda and the water. So these apple halves, we put soda on one and water on one. And you can see that they have turned a little bit brown. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the milk and the lemon juice. They're pretty close, but you can see a little bit of brown on the milk one there. And the one that had lemon juice has not changed much at all. So the reason that our apple slices turn brown after we cut them is called oxidation. And oxidation means that the oxygen in the air reacts with our apple and it begins to break down and turn brown. The lemon juice kept the oxygen from reacting with our apple chunk. So now let's go finish our field journal. Okay, back to our field journal. So let's record our results. We thought the milk was gonna be the one that made the apple brown the least, but our hypothesis was proven wrong, and that is okay. We observed that it was actually the lemon juice that worked the best. So let's draw our conclusion. If you put lemon juice on an apple, it will not turn brown as fast. And there we go, boys and girls. We have just walked through the entire scientific method.